lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. I am so glad that you guys are here for another fun video. So today is April 6th, 2021, and I had a pretty good day so far overall. It, it's pretty late. It, it's, um, it's about nine o'clock at this point with me videotaping this, but I had a good day. I uh, got out of the house, which is always a plus. I ended up going over to a greenhouse over in Holland, Ohio, um, which is by my old work. So it's called, um, people pronounce it Haynes Greenhouse, but I, I'm not entirely sure if that's correct or not. It's spelled H-O-E-N-S. Um, I was calling it Hoens for a long time until people were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, the greenhouse. And they were like, oh, that's Haynes. And I was like, I'm not going to rock the boat. If you call it Haynes, apparently that's what it's called. So I went over, I picked up some terrific plants today. So I am going to um, insert my... I made a TikTok video of it actually, but I'm gonna insert my TikTok video so you can see the plants that I picked up today. Hello lovelies, it's Tuesday and I decided to venture out and go to one of my local greenhouses called Haynes or Hoens or H-O-E-N-S, however you pronounce that. So we'll see how it goes. So I was going to record in there, but there were quite a few people in there, so I chickened out a little bit. But uh, suffice it to say, I found some absolute beauties. So I will uh, show them all to you when I get home. All right, I'm home now, so let's see what we got. So we'll start with the peach-colored begonia I got to put in my hanging planter up front on my porch. I got a little mini begonia that I'm going to have as a house plant. I got red onions, and I bought bunching onions jalapenos and cayenne peppers. And then I also bought a money tree, super cute. I got um, some more fresh basil to put in my yard and some kohlrabi to grow. And I also got three types of tomatoes. So I got 4th of July, Roma, and then I also got some husky cherry red. Beautiful day. It was about uh, 80 degrees, which normally grosses me out. And uh, your friend did sweat quite a bit today, but uh, it wasn't disgusting sweat, you know, like dead of summer, Ugh, it's hot just because it's hot kind of thing, you know. Um, I do have my fan going currently because it's uh, <laughs> it's still hot at nine o'clock at night up in, my, up in my craft room, so I'm like, well, we're going to turn that on. Rob ended up uncovering our air conditioner. We turned the air conditioning on today when he got home. So, uh, yeah, it was a bit warm. And it's, it's like I said, it's warm upstairs because we don't have really a direct vent um, that will shoot up a lot of cool air from the air conditioner up here. So it's fun sitting up here. But um, I did want to tell you, too, I've been doing some spring cleaning. So uh, that's why I haven't been on here lately. I've been going through some very old boxes. So, uh, if you don't know this about me, I am a bit, no, I am a pack rat to the extreme. So I have had boxes that I have traveled with over the years from one location to the other, to the other, to the other. So, you know, I moved out of my parents' house and I went to college. And, um, so most of those boxes, of course, stayed in my parents' attic, but then I moved to my first apartment some of the boxes came with me. And then I moved to my next apartment, more boxes came with me because I got a bigger place. And so over the years, I've been slowly pulling boxes out of my mom and dad's house. And uh, I'm almost done. I still have apparently like one or two more boxes over there. I swear mom and dad, I will get them out. I will. Um, but I decided that it's probably a good idea to start going through these boxes and um, get rid of some stuff. So if you know me, you're going to know that it's a great big deal that I got rid of three boxes of stuff the other day, threw it in my garbage bin, put the garbage to the curb. <laughs> I'm surprised that the garbage can closed. It was jam packed. Um, but I'm proud of myself. And so I am celebrating and... Um, <laughs> adding more books to my list because why not? That's what I do, right? I buy Funko Pops or books. So I made a new friend on TikTok. Her name is Courtney and she has a bookstore. It's called Quiet City Books. Quiet City Books. Uh, it's located in Lewiston, Maine and she is the owner and proprietor. So um, we've become friends on TikTok 
due to our shared love of Frightened Rabbit and Matt Pond PA and our general love for books in general. But uh, I had asked her, well, she, she kind of told me that she had this book that I wanted and she's like, here, I'll just give you the link to my website and you can buy it from me. So I was like, well, hell yeah, I will definitely support a small business owner. So I went on her website. Of course, I couldn't just buy the one book. I bought, I think, three books. So I got the box today, and so I figured I would open it up and show you guys what I got from her. But I'm also going to show you guys today some of the uh, gems that I found going through the boxes <laughs> from my attic. So um, we'll get to that in a second. But let's open up um, my uh, package from Courtney, and we'll see what books I got. So of course we're going to bring out the handy dandy trusty Halloween scissors. Very, very important. She boxed this up very well. It was so funny, Ray, our mailman, came up to my door today and he goes, I got some more books for you. Because <laughs> it's from Quiet City Books. I couldn't get, you know, I couldn't get a, oh, um, couldn't pull a fast one on Ray. And he's like, you probably haven't read the last book I delivered to you. And I said, you're right, I haven't fully read it. Because the last book I ordered um, through Amazon, I'm thinking about starting a business. It's kind of scary to put it out there like that. But for the last couple years, I've been kind of thinking about it. And uh, now I'm not paying attention. What I'm doing I'm going to jam these freaking scissors into my freaking chest or something. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about opening up a business for a long time, maybe a coffee shop, maybe a little bookstore slash record shop. Um, the idea has always been in my head. And now that I've talked to Courtney and I see that she's done it, it's kind of lit a fire under my bum to uh, look a little bit deeper into it and see if I would actually be able to do it. So um, I bought a business book that I'm kind of going over currently. So Ray wasn't wrong. I haven't finished reading it, but it's not really a book that you kind of read all the way through, but whatever. So that's kind of my, my pipe dream idea. I still think about it all the time. I actually went over today and talked to my friend Katie, who runs a local diner here in my uh, hometown. So she had a lot of information to give me about, especially she said if you do a coffee shop, you know, you have to be licensed and food safe. So there is a lot of, a lot of things that entail getting certified and up to code and all that stuff. But, you know, it didn't scare me away. It, it was a lot of information. I should have brought a notebook when I went over there so I could write some stuff down, but um, she was a really good source of information because she has had several businesses in the city of Toledo, and she's been pretty successful. I mean, this, this business she has currently has passed through the pandemic with, uh, you know, smooth sailing. So I really hope that she's here for the long haul. I absolutely adore her. Yay! <laughs> so I got a I got a message from Courtney. It says, "Hey Katie, thanks so much for supporting my little bookshop from afar. I'm so glad we we've TikTok met. Happy reading!" And then she left me the little note. So that is super super cute. And so the book that um, she had on one of her TikToks, TikToks, <laughs> on one of her TikToks that I saw that I thought sounded amazing is called "Girlfriend in a Coma." which is um, based off the Smith song, Girlfriend in a Coma. So I read the, uh, online, I read like the back, you know, the back little blurb about it and it sounded amazing. So I was like, I definitely should pick up this book. So I figured we'll buy it from Courtney. And so then when I was on her page, I was kind of looking at the different other books that she has in stock. And she had two books that I've been wanting to get for a while by Alice Hoffman. So Alice Hoffman is the one, um, if you have ever seen the movie Practical Magic, obviously, um, she's kind of the one that wrote that story and then she has a, pre a couple prequels, I think a couple of them. So I got one of the prequels and it's called The Rules of Magic and it looks really, really good. So this is the Owens family, it's kind of before you know, Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman's characters come into being. So it's kind of going over the ants, I believe, um, if I remember reading that properly. So I am very much looking forward to getting through this book. 
And the second book I got from Alice is called Nightbird. Now this book, um, I think it's kind of a young adult's book, but uh, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And it looks absolutely beautiful. It's a nice hardcover, actually. So, uh, oh, look at the insert. So the inside of it is really pretty. So the whole story is about this family. They live on an apple orchard, um, and it's, you know, dealing with a witch. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a stickler and a, a sucker for the, anything revolving around witches. So I am absolutely thrilled with this, and I cannot, I don't know which one I'm going to read first. Probably Girlfriend in a Coma, just because that's the one that got me to pick up the books in the first place. But I think it's going to be wonderful. So we'll see what happens with this one. And maybe I'll write a review and let you guys hear about it. Um, but we'll see. So again, you should go check out Courtney's um, website. It's a Squarespace website. So let me get the information and I'll either post it on the video or I'll post it probably in the description box below so you can go and help support her business as well. She's wonderful. And if you want to find her on TikTok, I'll link to her information, like I said, down below. So let's go ahead <laughs> and look at some of the things that I have uncovered from these boxes that have gone from place to place to place with me. So let me get the first item. Full disclosure, some of these items may scare a few of you if you have a, uh, a fear of dolls. So uh, let me just get those out of the way first. So the first one I'm going to show you is an absolute antique. It came from my grandmother um, who had it for years in her craft room and so when she moved out of her house she was trying to downsize and so I took this doll. I think she had several of them. She may actually still have one. Um, but this is a Shirley Temple doll. So this is her right here. She's got her cute little dress and she's got even some cute little shoes that her very well worn. The little tassels or whatever were on the top of her shoes have since come off. Um, and she's even got a little hairnet on her hair to keep it in place. <laughs> but she's so cute. And I know everyone, everyone that hates dolls is probably freaking out. I'm so sorry about that. But I absolutely love this doll. It reminds me of my grandmother. It reminds me of her house. It reminds me of summers there and we'd sit out on the back porch. She had a uh, screened in back porch that looked right on her lake. And so we would sit in there in the summer and we would draw, you know, sketches and we would make clothes for our dolls because my grandmother was a very, very accomplished seamstress. So we did a lot of those things, and like I said, she just brings back a lot of wonderful memories. So I think she's fabulous. I actually just got to see my grandmother for the first time on Easter. My mother was able to get her out of her nursing home. She's in like an assisted living center, um, but they have of course been on lockdown throughout all of 2020. So uh, I got to hug her for the first time this weekend, and it was so wonderful. So uh, I'm very appreciative of being able to see her because uh, my other grandmother passed away this year due to COVID. Um, she passed in February and um, we hadn't seen her in over a year. So it was very, very tough. Um, and so it was that much more bittersweet that I was able to reconnect with my grandma. So I'm very grateful for that. Second thing I want to show you, these are <laughs> little dolls that I've had since my brother was born. So my brother was born in 1993 and he was a big fan of like Nickelodeon shows, Disney Channel shows. I was the same way. I grew up on both channels, but we had a shared love of the show Rugrats. And so I don't know where I picked them up, probably like Walmart or something, but several over the years. And uh, so they're these little soft body hard head dolls. So they are the Rugrat kids. They're so strange. So this is of course Tommy Pickles. He's got a little diaper on and his shirt. And then I've got the twins who are my favorites in the series, Phil and Lil. So I got these two cuties. And I also have another Lil who's like a bedtime Lil. I don't know why I don't have a bedtime Phil. He is nowhere to be found, but I do have, <laughs> so I have triplets. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's very weird, but I have 
them. And then there is a uh, Chucky Finster, of course, who's looking a bit rough all of a sudden. He's got some weird mark on his mouth, but his hair has seen, um, <laughs> it's seen better days. Look at this guy. His hands are all messed up too. Um, but yeah, so we've got Chucky. And then of course, last but not least, you have to have Angelica. And so Angelica actually had two of these little purple bows, but I only have one left. So I don't, I don't know what happened to the other one, but I've just kind of been sticking the bow right in the middle of her head. So it doesn't look so odd, but she still looks she still looks crazy but so yeah so I have all of the Rugrats kids um, Susie I think came around later and I don't think they ever had a Susie in this type of a toy I don't know why I felt drawn to having these characters but um, I did you know I was like what 13 12 13 when I started watching Rugrats so here they are so those are the last of the dolls, I promise. I don't have any more dolls to show you. But I also found, I have a very small collection of Nutcracker dolls that I've had since I was very young. I was in ballet back when I was like, I think six and seven. So the, the two or three years, so five, six and seven, I think. Um, and so we always went, my mother and I would go see the Nutcracker um, in Toledo. So it was a big event. Um, so I could watch the, you know, the ballerinas and we loved the music and everything. And so I had a, I had a warm connection to the Nutcracker. So this was my very, very first Nutcracker I ever got. This guy right here, just a standard Nutcracker, nothing super special. He has, uh, lost his feet. I don't know where they went. They probably fell in the box at some, at some point and then fell out of the box um, so I don't know where his poor feet are, but I may just, um, <laughs> paint over this, you know, just paint this, this base, I'll paint it green again, and then just paint over the markings on the bottom of his feet with some black paint. Um, he doesn't necessarily need toes, do you? I don't know, but he, this one is very, very special to me. My mother bought it for me. His arms are very, very loose. This one I think even will come off. I don't even want to try it, but, um, he is delicate, but he's also 30, um, plus years old. So that, uh, says a lot. The fact that he's still in such good shape, I mean, aside from his feet massacre, um, He's in pretty good shape, so I love him a lot. So that was another thing that I found randomly looking through boxes. I also um, had a small collection of giraffes and um, bison or American buffalo, whatever you want to call them. I call them buffalo still. I know I'm in the minority, but that's what I grew up calling them. So when I'm just talking about them on a whim, I say buffalo, but I know that they're American bison. I know that, whatever. So we went out west when I was about 10 or 11, and um, we got to see buffalo in real life. It blew my teeny tiny mind. I thought they were the most amazing animals I'd ever seen in my life. And so I started collecting buffalo. So this guy I actually picked up out west. He is aging. He's got some little chips and you know, coloration marks out off of him. So I may go through and maybe repaint him too and just get him touched up a little bit. But he was my first buffalo that I absolutely fell in love with. I think I picked him up um, in Cody, Wyoming. I'm pretty sure, because we went to the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum and I think that this was the souvenir I picked up when I was there. And then I also have two other buffalo statuaries. I've got this little white buffalo guy. Great white buffalo. If you know what it is, you know what it is. And then I picked up this guy as well, which is another white buffalo and his little calf. So I have a huge affinity for these sweet guys. And um, there is a farm, actually, when you drive north, um, there is a, a, a road that goes up into Michigan. It goes through Ann Arbor. Um, kind of heads north that way and so there was a farm called Domino's Farms and it's Domino Pizza um, Domino's Pizza and the owner of Domino's Pizza 
created this location and brought a bunch of buffalo. He brought a whole herd of buffalo that um, he's raised and they've kind of flourished since he did this. And so when you're driving on the highway, I think it's Route 23 going north, you kind of come around a curve and then you can see the buffalo grazing out in the grass. Like it's such a surreal thing, you know, for somebody that lives in the Midwestern area to see buffalo in that kind of a situation right off the highway. It's completely surreal. Um, but I do remember going to Buffalo, um, to Buffalo, to Domino, Domino's Farms when I was younger for Christmas and they would decorate the whole farm. It would look absolutely gorgeous, lit up at night. And so we went there with my aunt years ago, but I do remember being able to go out and see the buffalo and that was the absolute highlight. I thought it was so amazing. Um, but I do want to show you one more thing. Fills my heart with joy. Um, I found this in another box. This was this is college age stuff now. So back in the day, I was that emo screamo girl that had her uh, her messenger bag backpack that I took everywhere with me, and so I decided to decorate it to reflect me. And so this bag is jam packed full of buttons. So this is drive through records, which was one of my absolute favorite record companies. Um, they produced some of my very favorite bands, um, the early November, um, newfound glory. Oh gosh, Finch, um, something corporate. There was a pile of them, the starting line. Um, I could probably list them down here so you can kind of see, but uh, they were such a huge part of my college years. And so finding this was such a joy. And I have since, I've added a couple um, over the years, like this one, obviously. I actually got this one at the, uh, the Lighthouse Museum in Rockland, Maine, when I took my trip to Maine back in 2015. So that one is recent, and so are these two here. These are my Sleepy Hollow pins. So those were from the same trip when I went to the Maine Lighthouse, but, oh, this is my Prince Edward Island pin up here. So some of them are new, some of them are almost 20 years old now. I mean, it's kind of surreal to think about that, but. Um, it's kind of a general mix of kitschy, weird sayings and band pins. So I have pans like for Sparta, Limbeck, Halifax, Finch, Plain White Tees, AFI, The Last Broadcast, uh, Love Drug, Finch, Early November, The Smiths, The Strokes, The Used, Newfound Glory, uh, The Get Up Kids. Cigarose. These ones I picked up at a Cigarose show that I went to. This one, this one, and this one over here. Those I picked up when my friend Nicole and I went and saw them back in 2016, I think. 2016, 2017. One of those years. Uh, it was October of that year, and it was absolutely wonderful. But this, this was a huge a huge memory chain, you know what I mean? Like just seeing it brought so many memories to the surface. And I even had some pins along the strap and these were kind of weird. This one is my Cindy Lauper pin. I went and saw Cindy Lauper with my sister back in February of 2003. Long time ago. It was Valentine's day of 2003. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And then this is a something corporate pin, a, uh, <laughs> 16 Candles pin, Snuffy from uh, Sesame Street, of course, Sirius Black, very important. And then this one says, have a great day, you worthless turd. And I still, my brain says that to a lot of people, actually. And then, of course, Care Bears, because I'm a 37-year-old woman that loves the Care Bears. And then I've got a couple more over here. So I've got Mighty Mouse, I've got Hot Hot Heat, I've got Good Luck Bear, I have the I'm the Pink Flamingo on the Great Lawn of Life, Orko from He-Man and She-Ra, and then, of course, Idiot. Needs no, needs no explanation. I love that little shrimp guy so very much. 
So this was probably my favorite thing that I found in my, uh, <laughs> I'm so bad at cleaning out things, guys. It takes me an hour and a half to go through one box because of course, if there's pictures in there, I have to look at every single picture. If there's a CDs like collection in there, I have to go through all the CDs. It takes me a whole damn day to go through one box, I swear, sometimes. Um, but I also did find, I went to a paranormal convention a couple years ago, and I got to meet Chip Coffee, and he was a very nice man. And I got one of his scarves that he had for sale. So it's got little tiny skulls all over it. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can bring up the bigger skulls down here. But it's so, so cute, and I love it. So I was very, very happy to find this guy. <laughs> there, we're going to finish this off with the skull scarf on. Um, and then I also, I want to end this. I know it's been longer than I was expecting. But um, I got in the mail also uh, yesterday a, um, a movie club um card. So my friend Tig uh, has a YouTube channel called The Attic Dwellers, but they've also started a new series called The Movie Club. And so he said, you know, if anybody would like a movie club card, you know, similar to your video connection or your blockbuster video card, um, just to let him know and he'd send me one. So he did because he's amazing. And so I got this in the mail yesterday and he also sent me a fabulous little sticker for my car that says the attic dwellers on it. So Tig and his friend Eric, they kind of go through nostalgia in their attic. So it's called the attic dwellers, obviously because they are going through the gambit of wonderfully nerdy, uh, nostalgic items. And so I just absolutely adore him. And I think you should definitely go check out their page. I will link to the attic dwellers below, um, to Tig's information, his Twitter page. Um, you should go and become friends with him because he's wonderful. So, um, I think that's all I wanted to update today. I did. <sighs> okay. One more thing my video I can do whatever I want so one more thing so the uh, the other day I saw that they had some new Funko Pops um, that kind of came on my radar and they are the cereal monsters so Count Chocula and Frankenberry um, but I've noticed that the small standard size Funkos of the the cereal monsters are stupidly expensive. I mean, just stupidly expensive. And I, I love them because obviously they're monsters, but they're also so nostalgic for me. Um, and I definitely wanted to get, get them for my collection, but I wasn't going to spend 50 plus dollars on each one of these. So I saw that they created a 10 inch version of both Frankenberry, uh, Frank, um, Frankenberry, Frankenberry. Yes. And Count Chocula. So I bought them both. So let me get those guys. Are you ready for this? Okay. So I present to you Count Chocula. <laughs> He's got a little cape. <laughs> I love him so much. I posted this on my TikTok and somebody commented on it. I think that you believe that that's actually Pete Davidson because they just did a, a uh, SNL sketch, a sketch, a sketch with Pete Davidson playing <laughs> Count Chocula. So I thought that was hilarious and very hip and current, you know, with all what the kids talk about on TikTok. Oh my God, I'm so old. Um, so <laughs> Count Chocula and Frankenberry. Look at this guy. Look at him and his cute little overall suspenders. Oh my God, guys, they're so freaking cute. I had to have them. I had to add them to my collection. So these guys, <laughs> these guys are the newest members of my Funko family. 
Um, and I'm sure I've probably picked up a couple more Funkos since the last time I updated um, about my collection. So I may just do a Funko collection update so you can kind of see what is now in my collection. Um, I did show you my Conan Monster. I did get Moira Rose. Um, and I picked up a couple more, but like I said, maybe I should just do another update. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that at a different time. So I will end this video. I know it's already way too long. Um, just wanted to kind of update you guys. Uh, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, Rob and I have got our first COVID vaccine, so we picked that up last week. Picked it up picked it up. We got our first vaccines last Tuesday. So it's been a week. I had really no symptoms except for a little soreness in my arm, which was fabulous. That was my biggest fear was having these nasty side effects because, you know, you go down the rabbit hole trying to research things before you get it. And it's never a good idea to do that. Never guys. <laughs> Never. Um, but we did get the Pfizer vaccine, so we are scheduled to get our second dose um, in two weeks. One week, two weeks. The 20th of April is our next appointment. So I can't wait till that's done at this point. Uh, I feel like I've uh, harnessed a new lease on life. Now I feel a little bit better about going out into public and. Uh, that's all I can ask for. So uh, I think I will end the video here. Uh, if you guys like this weird mishmash of stuff, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you know every time my silly butt updates a new video. Um, and make sure you like, share it to your friends if you think that they would like it too. And uh, I'll just plan on seeing all of your lovely faces in my next video.